you've been, you've been making sketches, you have a popular online store. Take us through the foundation of, of, of starting that, why you want to start that and how it, how it kind of ended up building for you. Okay. I just, uh, it, it started when I was young, man. Um, I'm not gonna go that deep, that far. I'm gonna jump on it and come on back. But I went to school for film, man. I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so that's my background. I, I played ball at Cal, at uh, UC Berkeley, and um, I played. Uh, and I, I graduated with a film degree, and know, four. So my my goal was to make films. If it wasn't gonna be football, it was gonna be film. You know what I'm right. so okay. I wanted it to be both. I wanted to go do football, and then after I retired, and then I jumped into the film industry. But it didn't work that way. I played arena ball for like a season, and then after all, I was like, "Yeah, I'm yeah, cool." My knees, my knees are great now, but my knees and during that turf season, that, that shit terrible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, so, and I would say I moved back home to LA, and I was just trying to. Uh, do, I, I started doing stand up comedy, 2009. And oh. um, I auditioned it for stuff. I've been doing, uh, I sort of, I got an agent in 09, sort of auditioned it for commercials and TV and movies. And nothing really panned out. I was a, I had odd jobs. I was, I was a personal trainer for 24 hour fitness for about five years. And then, uh, then I started teaching. I was a teacher for four years, a substitute sure. teacher in high school for four years. Yeah. And then from that, I started doing bodyguard work for Dizzy Wright. Um, oh, wow. And, okay. And, uh, I, and Hobson, Dizzy Wright and Hobson. And uh, I did that for five years, going on five years. I just quit the last month, last March. Uh, so because I couldn't, I couldn't be keep going on the road. So, but how this big job stuff started? Because I was already shooting sketches ahead of time. I mean, years before, but I wasn't consistent. I, I, in the whole year span, I might drop five little, di- five little sketches here and there. I wasn't consistent at all. I wasn't driven. I wasn't focused. Um, I was focused on like trying to get some money to be an editor for somebody or, or shooting someone's music video or directing something here and there, but nothing I sat, nothing I, I didn't invest in myself. I invested in my equipment. I invested in, in equipment to, to for people to hire me to do projects for them, but I wasn't doing nothing for me. In 2017, I went to Sundance Film Festival to support my homeboy. My homeboy, uh, he went on and uh, he got into Sundance. For the film, and this is a buddy of mine from like way back. We grew up together, and we, we came up. We met like 17, 18 years old in college, and then he put a film out there, and he won that shit. 2017, he won that shit. He won Sundance 2017, and I came back home to LA. We're like, okay, I got to do something different. Whatever I was doing, how, however I was hustling, I got to change it up. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't continue to do, to do the same shit and expect. A different outcome, you know what I'm saying? That's insanity, brother. That's insanity, bro. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. Mm-hmm. Yo, yeah. So I say I need to, I need to be consistent. I said from here on now, I'm about to drop at least one to two sketches a week. That was 2017. That was March of 2017. And then um, I just, I started doing that. I just started doing my own sketches. Not worried about nobody else finding people here and there that can hold the camera. That was another. That was another thing. I didn't have a team. Only person I was that that was consistent in my life. And at, um, uh, at that time, edge, um, it, uh, entertainment wise, was my boy Craig Smith. My boy Craig, uh, he's the only person that I saw every day or throughout the week. You know, what I'm saying on a regular basis, and, and so no one knew how to use the cameras. I was I knew guys who were DPs, guys who knew how to operate cameras, um, um, but they were professional cinematographers. Mm-hmm. They had big deals. And they had they were doing other things. They couldn't sit there and do, do my sketches for free. At the time, I didn't have no money. I didn't have no money to pay nobody. So I was asking homies, favors of homeboys, hey man, just grab the camera, hold it just like this, keep it steady and push record. That's how it started. And then over time, I started um, doing more and more sketches. People started paying attention a little bit by little. No one was messing with me at first. And then um, I hit the Tiberius. The, the Tiberius sketches were really blew things up for me. Um, that kind of woke up the end. Well, woke up. Uh, hey. So I want to talk to you about that Tiberius skit too. I got a great idea, man. For sure. For sure. Got a wonderful yeah. idea about that Tiberius skit. You know what I'm saying? Us being two large black brothers, you know what I'm saying? I got to be Tiberius' big brother, man. Just got out of San Quentin. <laughs> I got to be. I got to be Tiberius' big brother, man. Just got out of San Quentin. Or Pelican Bay, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to talk about it. Just mad, just mad, mad. Look, what they call reform. <laughs> just mad reform. <laughs> we'll figure something out. That might that might be something. That might be something. That, yeah, we'll talk about that. Sure. Oh yeah, indeed. Um, yeah, man. So uh, that 
that Tiberius sketch hit in 2017, around April, March, April. And then uh, I knew that I was like, damn, I ain't never, I never done a sketch that had that type of response. And then when I did that, I had to hit him with something else. I had to hit him with another one. I hit him with another a part two of Tiberius too. That did well as well. And then I figure out, okay, now niggas is paying attention. All, all you got to do is get their attention first. Mm-hmm. That's it. Once you get their attention, they mean social media, the masses, whoever. You know what I'm saying? People who you don't know. But the objective is, in order to in order to be successful in this, you you have to be visible on social media. You have to get people to buy into you. You know what I'm saying? Um, not just what you do, but buy into you as a person. I I I, I realize that people now bought it to me as a person, you know what I'm saying? They might not know Jody Pickett, but they know Big John, and it's basically the same type of dude, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so, when you when you talk to me now, I have an app now, so I communicate with my with my, with my supporters through my app. They can ask me all kinds of questions, you know what I'm saying? Or if I go live on, on IG or, or, or Facebook um, or YouTube, people will ask me all kinds of questions, and I'm very transparent for the most part. And so, but yeah, I, I built that fan base. I just can't continue making content. I was dropping two to three projects, two to three con- um, sketches a week. Mm-hmm. Sometimes down there on average, I was dropping 11 videos a month on IG. I'm on IG and then on Facebook. I mean, YouTube. So the journey was, I would say, consistency. I mean, I, I know a lot of people in this game. I've been doing, I've been, I've been, I've been around for years. Three years ago, Three years ago is when things really started changing for me as far as my own, own brand on social media. And uh, you had, you mentioned many about the, uh, the the merch store. I would say in the 2017 is when I started the merch store. I had one design, the two to max. That was my, that's my motto, you know what I'm saying? Um, and my boy, shout out to my boy, uh, Walter French. My boy, he uh, walked me through going online and setting up a Shopify account setting up uh getting my buying my domain name and i knew how to do those things already because i i, I did a, a a photography page years ago and i was doing photography too cinematography and photography but i did it through like a uh what's it uh wordpress that shit was crazy that wordpress shit. i had to look do all kind of tutorials to find out how to do all the shit, all the coding and all that stuff he made the one when he when he, when he got a hold of me he showed me how to do it super easy. It, it took all of an hour or two just to get everything ready and start and and, and, uh, and ready to rock. And within a, like a first, the first hour of me setting up my uh, my my, web, my uh, website, I made my first sale, which kind of paid for the website already. Right. You know what I'm saying not that hard to do once you. Uh, I knew I had at some point to at some point in time I knew that I had a I had like a, a people liked me at that point. People bought into at least the stuff that I've, done, I've been doing so far. And so I said, I, I need to go ahead and sell this shirt. You know what I'm saying? And, and it means more than just being funny. To the max means do everything to the max. Maximize. Right. Driving it, you know what I'm saying? Push to the limit. Yeah, hell yeah. So um, that's something I've been going by since I was a kid, man. I do everything, go hard or go home. I do everything to the max, man. Put, your, put all your efforts, if you really want it, put all your efforts into it, max out. You know what I'm saying? It's like only if you're on the bench, you, you squat, or you hitting that bench, and you really want to hit this weight. You, know you want a PR, you got to max out. You know what I'm saying? Press that weight up. Same thing with life. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I feel about everything I do. And I try to spread that. I mean, that's something that everyone should probably already have and in, 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 in instill themselves. Work hard. You know what I'm right. saying? Work hard and then work harder.